Hello from Cisco. My name is Goran. Um, I'm a technical marketing engineer in the security business unit. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of Cisco security in application centric infrastructure. We're going to go over about 15 slides of overview and then I'm going to give you a practical view of how we program ASA and Firepower services into an ACI fabric. Since the summer of last year, Cisco had released an application-centric infrastructure that is an offering for software-defined networking, and it combines the next-generation fabric made up of Nexus 9000 switches, the spine and leaf architecture that you see here, all controlled by Application Policy Infrastructure Controller, for short APIC, instantiating all the networking in this fabric for different uh, customers as well as their layer 4 through 7 services. I'm going to talk to you about insertion of adaptive security appliance in this fabric. We support through a device package that Security BU had written our 10 gig appliance that you see here, the 5585, with an embedded Firepower module. Uh, also physical 5500X, this is uh, our 1 gig variant of the same appliance as well as Firepower and virtual ASA that we can uh, instantiate in the fabric as well on different types of hypervisors. As part of the solution also we offer our next generation um, IPS products with a source fire acquisition so we can also through a device package for firepower insert virtual sensor as well as the physical sensor in this fabric. There we also provide our management console visibility with Firesight that can pull in all of the eventing and, um, and orchestration of these sensors in the fabric as well. Device package is how layer 4 through 7 services are added to the fabric and the vendor for ASA or security BU with ASA and Firepower has actually written these device packages and they allow APIC to orchestrate the policy itself, all the configuration for the ASA and for the Firepower it talks to the device manager, the Firesight in this case to actually add the data plane um, in uh, for the sensors in the fabric and also push um, any policy to the sensors themselves. To give you an overview of the evolution of the device packages, ASA device package was released at FCS uh, in the summer of last year of ACI fabric and we had progressed to offer today a quite rich and mature package of uh, different services uh, for the firewall um, into the fabric itself. That is comprised of both go to layer 3 or go through layer 2 insertion of the uh, appliance as well as uh, dynamic routing capabilities with L3 out in the fabric, uh, firepower redirection for embedded firepower services in ASA, native multi-contact support for customers being segmented on the same physical appliance as well as the feature that's called dynamic update in EPGs which allows us to uh, dynamically add filtering for different uh, endpoints that are already attached into the EPG. This is leveraging the attach uh, subscription by APIC that we can actually leverage an ASA device package. On the bottom here you see firepower device manager package which is actually the first version that we just released recently and allows us to add inline go through or layer 2 insertion of the sensor into the fabric and it's a um, device manager model that still extends full threat protection for your fabric. Between these two different models on the left here ASA model allows APIC to extend the full control of the data plane orchestration as well as policy configuration and we can take a slice of this traffic that ASA sees or all of the traffic 
and actually redirect it to the embedded Firepower services module. The Firepower is actually managed by Firesight and any of the eventing of NetFlow and syslogs can be collected by the server that sits separately on your network. If we look at the right side here, APIC itself is leveraging the device manager package for Firepower that it talks through the management console Firesight to instantiate the data plane and service graph segmentation on the sensors themselves. Once that is done, the full threat policy configuration is done out of band from APIC, only on the Firesight management console. And this console then collects all of the events from the sensors and alerts into it to give you the full visibility. As you can see between these two models on the left, you have a fully managed ASA by APIC. And on the right, you have partially managed Firepower device that allows you data plane and service graph segmentation to be configured by APIC while everything else is still done as you do today with the policy and visibility that you uh, have in the Firesight Management Console. If you have ACI Fabric today or you are wondering what kind of security ACI Fabric offers you, you can look at this slide and on the left here Embedded in the Nexus 9K switches, there is actually whitelist filtering that lives within the ASICs of the switches themselves. This means that it's uh, actually applied at line rate, but it's also distributed stateless filtering throughout the whole fabric in a way where APIC can actually update any of the switches with whatever contract and whitelist filter they have. Quality of service and real-time metrics are also part of the fabric itself. And what it needs to go to further and deeper inspections, it can leverage the service graph itself. In the middle here, you see ASA appliances, and they offer stateful firewall inspection of all the traffic. They offer deep packet inspections to dynamically open pinholes and simplify your policies for your tenants. There's a very large capacity in terms of access lists that we can install on ASA appliances. They offer also dynamic routing capabilities of both BGP and OSPF and also first hop redundancy and scale with ASA clustering on the physical appliances. All the way to the right you get very advanced security protections with advanced malware protections, next generation IPS and next gen firewall. Firepower appliances also allow us to have the same filtering capabilities that on the physical appliance there's some hardware assist as well that can be leveraged. So now let's look at the offering with virtual service nodes because they're easiest to stitch into the fabric and do a proof of concept. This year, Virtual ASA offers three hypervisors that you can leverage inside ACI Fabric, VMware, Hyper-V, and KVM. And this Virtual ASA appliance can actually work with any virtual switch, including application virtual switch that is a virtual leaf extension of the ACI Fabric. Let's look at an example of VMware in this case and how you can quickly deploy a virtual firewall in the fabric. Leveraging this zip package that we offer on Cisco.com, there is vCenter deployment OVF allowing you to do it manually through vCenter with lots of uh, attributes to fill out and you can also quickly push it with an ESXi OVF, leveraging scripting and OVF tool to have that appliance come up quickly. In turn, you can also attach a day, day zero configuration that allows you to stand up that appliance with the full configuration that you want. Once that appliance is up, the next problem you have to solve is to actually quickly license it. And although this appliance will come up and let you use all the features with the limited throughput and max connections, uh, this is called the Lab Edition license that's built into all of the appliances, uh, all the hypervisors for ASAV. And 
To actually go beyond and do full throughput, you need to license it for a particular throughput level with the CLI that you see here. And also, ASAV is now part of smart licensing as part of the cloud offering from Cisco. Customers can have their own portal to have a full visibility of all of their licenses. This is where their entitlements come in from their purchases of virtual appliance, ASA. And based on just a single token that you generate in that portal, you can license a large number of ASAVs using that token with this exact CLI. This smart token can also be built into a day zero configuration. And now you can see that we can, through all the scripting, stand up a firewall in the fabric, fully license and register it to APIC and get its service craft into a particular tenant. So when we talk about the pre-configuration of ASA, we are talking about day zero configuration on the virtual, and also we push the same config onto the physical appliance here. There's a couple of steps here that we have to worry about is turning into the right mode of firewall, whether it's a layer two transparent or layer three routed firewall. Those things have to be done prior to applying this day zero configuration. If you are actually using a physical appliance ASA cluster, you do have to set the right span cluster mode prior to applying the config. And this pre-config is in place now uh, with the management interface having the IP you expect um, to ape for APIC to reach out to ASA, to have the right uh, AAA settings uh, for APIC to log into it with SSL connection, and also most important to have the crypto key in place uh, to allow that SSL communication to happen. So this is the pre-config that you require also on any of the multiple contexts that have to be in place on the physical appliance to segment different customers into different tenants. Note also that changing into multiple context mode on the physical appliance requires a reboot. Um, so all of that should be done prior to applying this pre-config necessary for APIC. When we look at the firepower appliances, physical or virtual, Today we support VMware uh, hypervisor for the virtual sensor and here's a comparison of features that you can see between the two appliances themselves. On the virtual we don't have the fail open interfaces for obvious reasons. The fast path is not there also because it is a virtual one and switch routing and NAT options are not supported on the virtual appliance itself. Now let's look at uh, in detail, how do we insert ASA and Firepower, either physical or virtual appliances, as service craft nodes in communication between endpoints? Leveraging the device packages you see here on the left, the ASA and the Firepower device packages installed in APIC, APIC can configure these appliances uh, and stitch them into the data path of communication between an endpoint group on the left, app, and database on the right. These packets that are going from these two endpoints are redirected from the fabric into a service chain that you see here that's called service graph inside APIC. And all of the packets are processed in the order of coming to from left to right into ASA virtual and then coming into the firepower sensor as well. In this case we actually are using uh, Cisco UCS and whichever hypervisor is installed in place for ASAV it will be VMware for the firepower but we can easily mix and match these appliances between virtual and physical as well. For example we can also stitch in a physical appliance ASA context, user context for this um, customer to apply all of its policy and data plane as well. Let's look at next how we integrate an ASA 5585 cluster with embedded firepower services into a service graph. Here we can leverage an active-active high availability model with ASA clustering and also partner it with the Fabric Leaf virtual port channel uh, feature. Here we have on the left a physical and virtual endpoint on the app EPG 
with their own VLANs are coming into the fabric and being redirected as an EPG app into the cluster service node of ASA plus Firepower. Here we have APIC configuring fully an ASA appliance and also configuring the redirection of that traffic into the Firepower module. The Firepower sensor is managed by Firesight where the NGIPS policy is pushed onto that sensor and all of the eventing is then um, received by the Firesight and visible to the security team. When we talk about ASA clustering, it's important to distinguish the two items here that are necessary for clustering to function properly and to be set up. On top is the cluster data plane that leverages the virtual port channel. So there's a single large port channel and each ASA is dual attached to these leaves for redundancy purposes and to actually scale up the performance as one big logical firewall. You can see that the VPC 32 corresponds to an ASA port channel 32 on the um, ASA cluster itself. These numbers do not have to match, but this is the data, place, data plane that you see on top. On the bottom is the control plane for the cluster, which actually is showing you a dual attachment of each individual port channel uh, for redundancy purposes for each appliance, and those are all separate virtual port channels. For example, ASA1 here has VPC40 for the cluster control link. ASA2 has VPC41 and so on. Now let's take a look at an active standby high availability model, which is ASA failover and how it works with fabric leaf virtual port channel for the redundancy purposes here. Here are same endpoint groups app and DB their traffic is actually redirected now to a VPC4 that's connected to an active ASA appliance that also has firepower services embedded. The same way APIC is actually configuring full data plane and policy on ASA and it does so for both active and standby ASA. In this case the best, uh, best practice here for deploying ASA failover with VPC is to actually ensure that both port channels that uh, active and standby ASA connect into the fabric are different port channels. You can see VPC4 and VPC5. This is the case because the switches themselves need to switch over active MAC and active IP to a different interface when we actually switch active role to the other ASA. Now let's take a look at how multiple contexts work with service graphs. What we have on ASA is a system context where all the interfaces are defined as well as the contexts. So first context that you have to define is an administrator's context that allows APIC to log into and actually switch into system and any other user context. So each of the contexts that is defined here as context A, B, and C for different customers has to have their own pre-config with the unique management IP that APIC can talk to. What happens then is that APIC will actually go into the admin context and go into uh, switch into system context from there to what you can see up above here define the right sub interfaces on that port channel we reviewed earlier and select uh, dynamically VLANs out of the pool to actually create those sub interfaces. Then it will change into a particular context and push all the rest of the data plane and policy configuration onto the ASA context. The way that this looks in the interface here is that you can see here from the bottom in the logical device definition we define on the cluster this admin context management IP that APIC will go into to gain access to all of the contexts. Then the top item here, device one, is an active management IP. So this will identify through the name of management exactly spelled out, APIC will be able to identify which context we want to use as part of this service graph. And also 
APIC monitors the standby context as well, in this case for failover, or it can also be a master-slave um, scenario as well, where it will monitor the slaves as well in this case. So these are all management interfaces that we give. What you see here underneath are the data plane interfaces um, that we have in place. So now, let's show you practically how we put this together in APIC and how we leverage scripting to program this tenant uh, on the fly. How quickly can we instantiate all of these endpoint groups and their services and get all the connectivity to work again with all these virtual machines already in place? So this is a tenant diagram that I use in the training lab and has web, app, and DBPGs. And as you can see, it has a cluster of ASAs that actually leverages L3 out to do dynamic peering with the fabric and establish peering with this external node I'm emulating here as a router. It's actually a virtual ASA. So we can gain connectivity from an outside host and ping the web host. And also on the ASA failover side here, I'm gonna show you connectivity reestablished from an app to database host as well. So let's take a look first at APIC itself here. So in this APIC interface under layer four through seven services, this is where we actually import the device packages we spoke about. So here's an ASA device package. That's a function firewall. And here are the two templates that you can leverage for your tenant the routed and transparent mode templates that include also an access list, the uh, interface is all configured to make it easier to install. And here's a Firepower device package, function NGIPS, and two templates, one for physical and one for virtual NGIPS. So now if we go to our tenant uh, pod 10 here, we actually have everything defined here from its um, application profile with three app db and web epgs we have the networking in place with its bridge domains and two private networks we can call them vrfs and also we have the security policies and their contracts and this is where the whitelist filters sit and actual service graphs are applied. So if you look at this app to db contract, we were talking about that contract allowing connectivity between app and database. And also if we look at out to web, now this is an L3 out talking through this contract to the web EPG. Just to come back to our diagram here, this is what we were talking about, app to DB and outside to web. So now we can take a look at the layer four through seven services here. And we have three main folders where our services are. The layer four through layer seven devices, we have two of our contexts that belong to an ASA cluster and also an ASA failover. Then we have a function profile folders where their configuration is. So if I look at actual config for ASA cluster here, I can see access lists that are permitting certain traffic here. And also we have related configuration for interfaces themselves. So for example, I have an IP and mask for this particular interface on ASA. And finally, we have service graph templates where we have our relations to the contracts. And here is uh, how that particular service graph and service node are connected between the consumer and provider EPGs. So right now I can show you here that I have a web Linux that is pinging the outside host here and we have pinging going and connectivity is in place and the same is happen happening here for application Linux. Um, that EPG is also able to ping the database. The database 
host is also pinging the other way. If I look in this screen here for those two contexts, um, I can log in to these contexts and I can see the IP information within this context for pod 10. So this is a class, this is actually a failover context. If I look at the um, access list that I was showing you, I can see those ACLs um, APIC applied on this firewall itself. If we look at the cluster and connect to that as well, um, I can see its IP addresses that I showed you one of those earlier. And you can see the port channel subinterfaces that were dynamically, uh, VLANs were dynamically selected from the pool and all of that information was pushed from APIC to the service node here. I can also show you that there is actual routing in place that is making this ping happen from outside to web. And you can see we have here are two routes necessary for ASA to actually reach out to both of those endpoints. So back to our diagram here, this is our ASA context that is peering with the fabric and has an understanding of the um, subnets in the web and outside, e um, outside environment and web EPG. What I would like to show you now is the script that I'm gonna use here to actually re configure and program this whole tenant in place. What we're going to do here is we're going to observe the interface itself as I um, destroy this tenant and lose the pinging uh, of those hosts and I rebuild it all slowly from the failover and cluster itself. So <clears throat> let's start the script here and the first thing that's going to happen with the script is that I'm going to destroy that tenant. So that pod 10 tenant had disappeared. And if I look at the pinging from these hosts had actually stopped to operate. So we're going to, going to slowly go step by step here and rebuild all of the EPGs and application profile, their bridge domains, and proceed to actually define the failover device, its configuration, the service graph, and apply that service graph to the contract, creating that contract as well, and then proceed to create the cluster as well, which will create that device, the config, the graph. As part of that cluster, there's also L3 out definitions that we have to put in place, and then apply the graph and update the selection policy with L3 attachments of this um, ASA context into the fabric. That will in turn reestablish the connectivity between all the hosts, which will mean that I programmatically had created this context fully in this ACI fabric. So if we keep going now, what I'm going to see is I'm going to see that um, pod 10 tenant had actually been created. I'm going to select it and I can see that application profile and bridge domains had been recreated here and we still do not have any contracts and we don't have any layer 4 through 7 services created yet. So if we keep going here we will create a failover device here and if I look at that device, what I'm looking for is actually a stable state, meaning that APIC was able to register that context and get it uh, ready for insertion into the service graph. If we keep going further here, I'm creating the same configuration that we uh, showed you earlier. So this is what APIC will actually push to ASA device once the service graph is instantiated. And this is the config that will go in. This is uh, its external interface that we show here. So as we go further here, we will create that service graph. And now we're also going to apply that service graph and create the contract itself here. So the contract is created and you can see right away that the ping had actually started to work in between the app and database EPGs as soon as we actually created uh, um, all of this networking and the config was pushed out 
to the ASA failover repair that you see here. So if we keep going, we're going to hope to reestablish outside connectivity to web. So we're going to go and proceed to create our cluster device that we see here. We will create the configuration necessary for the cluster device and the service graph itself. And as part of networking folder where all the L3 out items are, we will be creating L3 out entities under external routed networks here. So that's another definition that happens here. So we defined WAN out um, and cluster internal and external interfaces. We will then create the contract itself and update the selection policies at the end um, necessary to get this working. So at this point I can go into the cluster context here and I can look at the routes again and I see that I had not learned the routes on this ASA device yet but all of its configuration is still in place. So we can look at some logging as well and see when we actually learn those routes because they will take some time to actually propagate through the environment and our ping will actually will determine um, when that connectivity is established itself. If I look at OSPF neighbors in here I see that I have them in place and we actually went from loading to full on some of these and all of a sudden I see ICMP coming through so I see both of these routes in place and I look back to that web Linux and it actually established connectivity again. So just to review what we had done is rebuilt programmatically this whole tenant from its networking segments to its VRFs that exist inside the fabric SVIs that um, are defined within those VRFs and attached layer 4 through 7 services with their policies all done from APIC talking to APIC with Python scripting and using the northbound API um, all of this was done within a couple of minutes um, it can be done even faster if we actually let that script run very quickly. So I thank you for your time and hope you enjoyed this video about ASA and Firepower in ACI Fabric. Thank you.